Now we're ready to change our interpreter. We're ready to make explicit the fact that as we're interpreting the left expression, the work to do on our to-do list is to interpret the right expression and eventually do uh, an addition with numplus. So let's start by pulling out interpl.env and putting a dot in its place. Okay, so this is what we're going to do right now. This is the work that we want to do in the future. This uh, plate expression here with the dot in it, that corresponds to our to-do entry that said in curly syntax, we're working on this left expression and we'll eventually have to work on that right expression. Okay, so xp here corresponds to the r with substitution m's part of the interp. We might as well write it our to-do list entry actually using this plate level expression. Okay, so the, the to-do list entry we want to represent is this numplus um, with uh, the dot and the interp r. And we've agreed to represent that kind of continuation entry using plus second k. Uh, the plus second is encoding the fact that it's a num plus here and the dot is at the beginning. And we need to remember the r and environments. Those are there in the plus second record just like they were in our original code. This is almost the right idea, but remember plus second k has this third part, which is the rest of the to-do list. So whatever the dot dot dots are down here, that's going to be some other continuation k. Where does that continuation come from, though? Well, that continuation is where we're supposed to deliver the result of adding the number. So whoever called interp knows what the rest of the things to do is. So that's why we add a new argument k to interp. k stands for the continuation. Interp now takes an expression, an environment, and a continuation. And when it's able to finally add the two numbers in this numplus, it should deliver that value to the rest of the continuation. Those are the dots down here, so we put uh, corresponding k over there in plus second k. So if we do that, that means plus second k is our new extended continuation. Where does it go? Well, at the same time, interpl.env needs to know what is the to-do list? What should I do with the value k? So that's why we just need to move this parenthesis down here, right? We make this plus second k, this new continuation, to be the continuation that we pass in to interp. It'll be a little more clear how this works if we start looking at uh, places where we do get a value. One of those places is when we interp a nummy expression. So when we interpret a nummy expression, we don't need to call interp anymore, so we don't need to build up any more to-do work. Uh, instead, we do actually have a value. What are we supposed to do with this value? We used to just return it, but now we're not supposed to just return it. We're supposed to keep working on our to-do list. So we're going to make a new function called continue, which means continue working on the to-do list. It takes the to-do list and it takes this value that we finally computed. Let's look inside of the continuation, the continue function. It takes a continuation and a value, and then it does the rest of the, the computation so it eventually produces a value. And let's suppose that that record is done k. So if we were, if our whole program to evaluate was just the number five, then we would create the numv5 here. Our continuation would be done k, no work to do, and so we would land at this case and we would just return the numv5. On the other hand, the continuation might be plus second k, just like we saw in the earlier setup. So in that case, plus second k is waiting on a value, and then it wants to start uh, evaluating the r expression uh, in, in some environment, and it has some rest of the continuation. That is, the to-do list at this point was apparently num plus a dot with interp r. So that's why we're going to continue with interping the r. That's going here. The dot dot dots are the next k. Uh, and after we get a value from interpar, then we actually want to do the num plus with the value that we already got. What is this dot? That was the value delivered to this continuation. That is, it's the value v, which might be numv5 that we got from this case of interp. In any case, what we're going to do is take this entry off the to-do list, or at least change it, to be one that says, now we've got a specific value v. We're waiting for a value that's the right expression, which interp should to del deliver. And the way we represent that uh, continuation is using do plus k. So do plus k is recording the value v, it's waiting for a value from the right expression, and we have the rest of the continuation. Eventually the interp of this r will reduce it down to some value, and at that point we're ready to actually perform the plus, so we'll end up in the do plus k case of continue. Let's look at that case. So by the time we get here, we've got a value. This v now is the value for the right expression. Our to-do list is num plus. It used to be called v. I've renamed it to vl so because we had two different v's. But this vl is the one that is in the do plus k record. That's the value for the left expression. v is the value for the right expression. So we're ready to actually uh, perform that addition. 
and then we can just continue on with the dots here. We can continue with the next k and that number value.